Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at selection constraints. Selection constraints can save you a lot of time, and some of these tools are relatively new to Maya, so let's get into it. So what selection constraints are is a way to filter your selection in Maya, so when you select something, it discards other things based on what you've chosen to filter out. The easiest way to explain this is to just show you. But first, here's how you can access selection constraints. So uh, just go over here to the um, uh, tools panel, basically, and um, oops, um, select the move tool and just double click it. And it'll open up this options box here. And then you want to go down to common selection options. I'm just going to hide the move stuff here and expand that. And from there, you'll see right here, you've got uh, selection constraints and they're set to off right now. If you click this guy, you can change them to all the different uh, types of constraints that you can filter by. So you've got angle, border, edge loop, edge ring, shell, and UV edge loop. I'm just going to close this down here. So the other way that uh, you can access selection constraints is holding W on the keyboard and also holding left mouse button at the same time. So you hold both those keys and don't let go. And this menu appears, one of the marking menus for the like uh, tools menu. And then uh, if you go down to right here, you can see selection constraints and it's got all those same options. Uh, as well, you can get into the move tool options. And so instead of having to go over here and double click, um, you can just go W left click hold and then go options and it'll take you to that same menu. And the important uh, reason that you wanna do that is because all of these uh, constraints are all just kind of on off toggles except for angle. Angle, you actually have to put in uh, a numeric value for the angle you want. So you'll still have to use this menu, even if you use this menu. So I kind of go in here to quickly toggle them on and off. And if I want to set the angle toggle, I'll click that. Oops, which will close it in that case. But I'll click that, and it'll open this. And then you can change the angle. Where is it here? So whatever, you could put the angle at like 50 degrees, let's say. And then we can just turn that off. And then the next time I go into here and I select constraints and say angle, it'll automatically go to 50. And I modeled this kind of um, these three spheres to help uh, demonstrate the different selection constraints and how they work. And uh, it ended up looking like uh, Mickey Mouse head. Uh, so let's just make that official. There we go, uh, looking awesome. Uh, so we'll demo the tool on uh, uh, this finely uh, crafted model that I just made. So this guy is a bunch of separate geometry right now. So a bunch of uh, separate elements or objects. Um, so you can see I can click on each one of these guys separately. So I'm just going to select that and uh, I'm going to combine that. Combine into one object. So now when I select it, it's just a single object. OK, so let's uh, just go and double click on the move tool there and close that and expand this and check out the first uh, selection constraint, which is angle. So what this guy does is it's going to take the angle that you input here, and it's going to filter your selection based on the angle of curvature of your model. So uh, let's just set this to 20 randomly, so 20 degrees or whatever. And then I'm going to go into face mode. And you'll see here, see how as I drag over it, the pre-selection highlight is only going to grab faces within the ratio of the like 20 degrees or whatever. So um, this can be really handy for selecting things from the top down camera or any angle really where you want to get um, just part of your model selected on like a round surface or something. So you'll see as I change the number here, let's go 10. It's going to get even less. And we can go to something a bit higher, which is like 30, which is going to get kind of bigger and bigger. Um, so this can be handy in some occasions to get some like really tricky uh, selections on your model. Um, it also works uh, on edges as well and verts and whatever selection mode you want. It's just going to take your current selection and filter it by whatever the constraint is. Uh, so next up we have uh, border. And so what border does is it's going to look for uh, the borders of your geometry. So by default it's not going to do anything because I don't actually have any geometry borders. So let me just uh, turn that off temporarily since it won't let me select anything. And then I'm just going to make some arbitrary borders here. So I'm just going to like delete those faces there. And here, let's just hack this guy's ear off here. There, so I've got a couple borders basically. So now I can turn on the border. 
And as you can see here in face mode, it's going to select the faces on the border. So this is kind of interesting. Um, but you'll probably mostly want to use it in edge mode to get the border edges of your geometry. So like, let's say you wanted to grab this guy and then do the fill hole, for example. You could do it like that. Um, or you wanted to grab this guy and then you wanted to extrude those faces up. You could do it like that. And then next up, we have edge loop. So basically all this does is it makes the pre-selection highlighting go to each loop that you highlight over. Um, I don't particularly find this one all that useful because let's say you can just turn it to off. If you want to get an edge loop, it's not really worth going into this menu and clicking through all that um, crap. You can just select a single edge and just double click. So if you just double left click, it's going to select the edge anyways. And of course, as you hold shift, you can, you know, select more of them or whatever. So that because selection constraints, not really all that useful. Okay. And then the next one we have is edge ring. This one's a bit more useful because you can't really double click to get the ring. As you can see here, it just highlights all the rings in whatever direction. So if you select that, boom, I've got a ring, shift, boom, another ring, another ring, another ring. Um, this way, another ring like that. I actually find uh, the edge loop and the edge ring selection to be incredibly powerful, and I use it quite frequently. So I've actually, on my my, I've set up hotkeys uh, to do that. So I've got the basic double click for the edge loop, but I also have uh, Control E on my particular hotkey setup to select a loop like that. So Control E and it selects a loop. Uh, but probably more importantly, I'll select an edge, and if I want to go to ring, I press Control R on my keyboard. So there, I can just get a ring. So I don't even have to use the selection constraints. I've already set up uh, a uh, hotkey for that because I use it so frequently. And if you guys would like to set up your own hotkeys, I'll paste the commands for select edge loop and select edge ring uh, into the uh, description down below. So you can just copy paste that uh, into your hotkey editor or do whatever you want with it. Alternatively, if you'd like to uh, put those two uh, selections uh, on the shelf, I can show you how to do that right now. So let's go to, where is it? Uh, we just have to make a selection here. And let's actually go to Edge. And then you want to go to Select. And then you want to say Convert Selection. I'm just going to tear this menu off. Let's make it easier here. So you go to Convert Selection. And then so right here, you can say Edge Loop and Edge Ring. So what you do is you hold Control plus Shift. And then you left click either one of these. And when you click that, it's going to add a button automatically to the shelf that does that. So I'm going to do the same thing for edge ring, control plus shift, and then left click, and then boom. It gives you a nice little icon there. And then so anytime you click those buttons, there's the loop, there's the loop, and there's the ring. You can do something fancy like go loop and then ring get all the rings. Uh, do that one quite a bit, actually. And if you want to get really fancy, actually, you can go into here, right click it, choose edit and go into the whoops, sorry, put that in the wrong order, right click the ring one and go edit and then uh, select this uh, code right here, put that in the description for you. And then uh, right click and edit the, the loop one and then click on the double click and then paste that into there and then just do a save all shelves. Cool. And then we'll just delete this guy. And what that does is it means when we single click, we're going to get the edge loop. And when we double click, we're going to get the edge ring. So here, check this out. So single click gets the loop, double click gets the ring. So that's pretty cool as well. And then the next uh, constraint is shell. This one's actually pretty cool. So what this does is, so I've combined this model. It's got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different uh, elements or objects combined into a single model, but the verts aren't welded, so they're still considered separate elements. So what Shell does uh, when you turn the selection constraint on, let's say we go to face mode, is it will highlight each object within the combined object or each element in there. Um, so this can be quite handy to quickly select like individual stuff and move it away or whatever. When you've got a really complex or really high poly model, this is kind of nice to enter this constraint uh, just because you might have to you know, select certain pieces and there's just too many verts. The meshes become too dense or whatever. I'm just going to turn this off for a second. And then I'll show you another trick that I use uh, to do that same thing without having to enter the tool. Go into face mode. Whoops, turn that off. Go into face mode and then just double click. So just double left click and boom, you get a, you get a shell automatically. Double click, double click, double click, double click. 
Uh, same thing, you have to do the double click though. So like I said, uh, sometimes I'll use this uh, guy and sometimes I'll just do the double click. Okay, and finally, the last constraint is UV edge loop. And so what this does is um, you can see over here, I've just applied an automatic map uh, to the whole model. So it's got like the crappiest UVs ever. You can see there's all just like random seams and uh, stuff that needs to be stitched up there. Whoops, I screwed that up. And then um, when you turn this guy on, basically what it does is when you go into edge mode, it is going to try to highlight um, the UV edges from over here. So you want to be in the 3D viewport. It's a geometry selection constraint. And as you see, see when I highlight here, it highlights the border edges of the UV shell. So instead of having to go into the actual UV editor to like select the shell of the UVs, um, you can get it uh, directly here uh, in the viewport. So it's kind of similar to the geometry border edge, but it looks for the border edges of the UV layout. As you can see there, there's a border edge there and there's a border edge there. Um, I don't use this one too much, uh, but it can be handy in certain situations. So that's cool. We can save a lot of time by selecting things using constraints, but there's actually a separate menu for UV editor constraints, which can also be super handy. So let's take a look at that now. So I'm just going to turn this guy off here. And so basically what happens in Maya uh, when you have almost any tool open is it is context sensitive. So if you're in the 3D viewport here, the constraints menu is going to be like this, but if you switch over to the UV editor and put that in focus, basically what focus means is when you click on one of the viewports and it gets this little line around it to tell you which uh, viewport is in focus. So I'm just going to do that. Watch this menu here. That's our constraint menu. And when I click in the UV editor, it's going to go into focus by putting this little um, highlight around it to tell me that that's the window in focus. And you'll see this area actually updated and it's become the UV tool instead of the regular move tool. And with that comes the same menu in the same spot, but it has a completely different set of selection constraints. So we'll check those out now. Okay, so the first constraints are front and back facing. And so what that does is it's going to select uh, if the face is a front or back facing uh, UV layout. So basically a mirrored or flipped UV shell versus a front facing UV shell. And since I don't currently have any front or back facing, or they're all front facing. I'm just going to quickly convert some of these. I have a hotkey on my keyboard to just flip the UV shell. So I'm going to flip a couple of these just for fun. Um, there we go. I flipped them all. Um, and so oh, let's flip one more. Why not? There we go. Um, and so they turn red, uh, basically, because I have this little setting turned on that colorizes whether they're not they're front facing. So it's uh, turn the back face culling on here. And let's do a drag select, and you'll see these are the back facing ones because they're the inverted shells. So if I drag select all the UVs, it's going to filter these. So this can be really handy if you're, you've got a really complex uh, UV layout and you just need to grab a couple uh, front or back facing UVs. And then the second one front facing, it's just going to do the opposite. So you can drag select all your UVs and just find the ones that are flipped. Um, that's actually super powerful. And next up, we've got the geometry borders. So this is the same as it would do in the 3D viewport, except for it's in the in the UV viewport. So turning geometry borders on is going to select basically these holes that we have in our geometry. So if I click over here and I go to UV and I do a drag select of everything, it's only going to grab the borders that have been cut in the geometry, not the same as the UV borders. These are the geometry borders. Now, way more useful than that is the next one, which is actually texture borders. I'm pretty sure this is relatively new to Maya. I think it was introduced in 2017, Service Pack 3 or something like that. Uh, this one is super powerful. So this one, I believe, works in edge mode. And you select all of the edges. Is it edges? Oh, yeah, there we go. That's weird. Um, you select all the edges, and it is going to grab the UV shell edges or UV border edges. So nothing to do with the geometry. This has only to do uh, with the layout of your UV shells. Um, and this tool is extremely important for baking normal maps because generally you want to um, harden the edge of your uh, low poly normals where you have a UV seam and split. And so this can speed that up. You could work this into a script. Um, it's actually part of this command is part of the, the normal map baking script that I created for the Marmoset tool bag. 
which will automatically kind of do that for you on every export. And then the next two are somewhat useless. They're the same thing as the edge loop and edge ring uh, that we looked at before, um, just in 2D space. And again, like I said, I have a hotkey for ring and I have a hotkey for loop, and those hotkeys will work in this viewport as well. But basically, it's just going to select the edge loop. And if you go to ring, it's going to give you the ring. But again, I would just use none, and I would just so zoom in here to this guy. I would just do the same thing, double click here or make a hotkey and hit control R to get the ring or use your button that you created earlier up there. Um, but they're there if you want them. And finally, the last one is UV shell. So that's the same as the um, geometry shell, except for it's in UV space. So you can go and grab uh, each one of these guys by highlighting it. It'll just grab the shell. Um, this can be pretty useful sometimes, actually. Uh, again, when you've got a really complex UV layout, um, grabbing the shell can be helpful. But uh, a better way to probably do it is actually just turn this off, turn on no constraints. And then uh, just uh, in the UV viewport, hold the right mouse button and just select UV shell. And that will actually give you the same thing. So um, that's a pretty powerful tool. So you can just like single click these to grab them and move them around and pre-select them. Um, so that's probably just a better way to do it. I would just use this menu instead of bothering setting a constraint. If you like this video and want to see more game art tips and tricks, please click the subscribe button. As usual, any links will be in the description. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have an exceptional day.